William Ruto is a man under siege. There is a looming war between William Ruto and some of his sacked cabinet secretaries. We know that some were serving as members of parliament and even senators. Duane was an MP before he resigned to take up the position of a cabinet secretary. Alice Waome was an MP before she resigned. Murkomen was a senator before he resigned. Duale and Alice Waome have so far been named into the new cabinet. But Kiptuba Murkomen has not been named in the new cabinet. We can still remember he resigned in order to be a cabinet secretary. And from the look of things, William Ruto is receiving some political attacks from every corner. Gen Z's are demanding of him not to reappoint any individual who was in the sacked cabinet. On the other side, those is sacked campaign for him and they are piling pressure on him to reappoint them. So Ruto is torn between a rock and a very hard place. And even the six persons he has so far renominated in his cabinet, Gen Z's are still piling pressure on him to withdraw their appointments. So Ruto has so many problems. I want us to have a look at some remarks made by Honorable Gideon Kimayo, KEO South Member of Parliament. A very close Kipchumba Moore comments a line. And it's somehow certain and given that Kimayo is just speaking what Murkomen cannot come out openly to say. Honorable Gideon Kimayo, Kama Kindiki, Duale, Alice Wahome, and Soipan Wamirudi, then Kipchumba Murkomen Lazima Arudi. All of them relinquished their elective seats to join cabinet. Either bring them all or leave them all. Kipchumba Murkomen fought for this government. He deserves to be in cabinet. That's a very close Murkomen's ally. And I'm very sure, almost certain, that he's speaking on behalf of Murkomen. That's Murkomen speaking, only that he cannot come out in the open to say that. But that's Murkomen speaking. And we also saw a few days ago, Murkomen was campaigning in some parts of the college nation to be reinstated back into the cabinet. And besides Murkomen, we've also seen Aisha Jumwa campaigning at the coast. She was in Kilifi, imploring upon William Ruto to reconsider her. But in her case, it ended very badly when Kilifi residents booed and heckled her. So the ground in Kilifi does not want Aisha Jumwa to be reappointed back into the cabinet. And also we can remember, upon William Ruto sacking his cabinet, there were celebrations in Eldoret as residents cheered Murkomen sacking. So it's a complicated balance. William Ruto is a man under siege. I want us to put all this into perspective for Kenyans who understand what all this means. If you are watching us but you are not yet subscribed, subscribe, give the video a like. Let's proceed. Ruto brought this upon himself. As the president, he should be very mindful on how taxpayers' money are being spent. I don't see the urgency or the need why William Ruto had to tell some elected leaders to resign for him to nominate them into the cabinet. There are so many qualified Kenyans who could have occupied those positions. But William Ruto, because 
He doesn't know how to use prudently taxpayers' money. He implored upon some of his allies to resign in order to be considered into the cabinet. I strongly believe that now sacking those individuals he did prevail upon to resign, that's clearly going to put him at loggerheads with those individuals. And those individuals must just start campaigning against him on the ground. If William Ruto will not instead Murkomen, I'm seeing a very high possibility where Murkomen will start anti-Ruto campaigns on the ground. And if you listen to this member of parliament, they are just sending early warnings to William Ruto. If Ruto will fail to reinstate Murkomen, he should and must be prepared for anti-Ruto campaigns in El Geo Maracuet. That's something William Ruto should be prepared to deal with. And also this should be a lesson to the elected leaders. If you offer yourself for an elective seat, you promise the people that in the five years duration you are giving me, I'm going to do for you this, 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 and that. And the people trust you and they elect you only for you to resign. That's a betrayal on the people. So this should also be a lesson to these leaders that if the people have entrusted you with a leadership position, don't betray them. More common betrayed El Geo Maracuet residents and because of that, I strongly believe he'll also have to pay dearly for betraying the people. He might even find the ground very hostile for him. The ground might not need him again. They elected him, he betrayed them. And we can still remember sometimes back when Charles Keter was elected Kericho senator, he resigned and was accommodated in Jubilee government. Later he offered himself, that was in 2022, to be considered for a post, the people rejected him. So more common in my honest opinion, the mere fact that he resigned from that post as a senator, he shot himself on the foot as far as ground politics are concerned. And that will augur very negatively for him any time he dares seek an elective position. And again from these remarks, it's almost certain and very clear that William Ruto is held hostage. For him to move forward, I've always maintained in this forum that he has to be trained his close allies. Some of these individuals, he has to betray them for him to save his own skin. If he reappoints them back in his cabinet, then he might end up losing. Gen Z will still continue piling pressure on him to sack those individuals. So William Ruto, for him to move forward, he has to betray him some of his close allies, such as Kipchuba Mokomen, the likes of Kindiki, and this other one has reappointed into the government. As I conclude, William Ruto is destined for destruction. He is going to fail. I have no doubt about that. If only you look at things diligently, what William Ruto has been doing in the last two years, he has been the president. Ruto was ruling as if Kenyans don't matter to him. As if the opinion coming from the people don't matter. Look on how he forced the housing levy on Kenyans. Look on how he has forced the social health insurance fund on Kenyans. William Root has been bulldozing things on Kenyans. I believe his time is up and is clearly going to fail. We heard how he spoke yesterday in Bomet. I'm seeing a very arrogant president, a president who has learned nothing. And that's why I believe he will not get it right. He's destined to fail. And even the second batch of the cabinet secretaries he might appoint, if the first batch was that bad, the second batch will be worse than the first one. And those are things that will take Kenyans still to the streets demanding for William Ruto to go. Let me stop it there. If you are watching us but you have not yet subscribed, 
subscribe give the video a like any person watching us outside kenya for the first time drop a comment let us know from which part of the globe you are watching us from if possible subscribe give the video a like the remarks by the member of parliament i won't be wrong to say that's keep chuba morkomen speaking through that member of parliament he's just trying to say what morkomen cannot come out in public to say again you are seeing the disparation among some of these cabinet secretaries who were appointed by ruto they are very disparate they are using those positions to enrich themselves william ruto should go for people who are busy people who can do without those positions this one so desperately needs these positions they are just there to please ruto i don't think they will deliver they'll be waiting for orders from above in order to execute a role let's meet in our next analysis thank you